Hi, I'm Chris Crotty of the Jack Jackson Podcast. In each episode of Jack Jackson, you'll follow the adventures of 1950s private investigator Jack Jackson, along with your favorite recurring characters, his assistant Kitty, Peter the Landlord, the villainous Rube Goldberg, as well as new characters brought to life by our voice actors. Each episode delivers a new film noir mystery, accompanied by sound effects, historic events, and pop culture references. Some right, and well, some not so right. And to recreate the style of an old-time radio program, we include a show sponsor and record each episode in the dark in front of an audience. It's a unique improv comedy experience with a touch of nostalgia that always delivers plenty of laughs. So sit back and get ready for another episode of Jack Jackson, in which Jack takes on his toughest case yet. It's time for an all-new episode of Jack Jackson, Private Investigator. Sponsored as always by oh, at the wrong Bronson's I'm at the wrong show. Oh. With Bronson's Brooms, you'll get a handle on your cleanup. <laughs> Tonight, Jack takes on his toughest case yet, in the case of the Purple Diamond. Sponsored by Bronson's Brooms. With a Bronson Broom, you'll have a good time. <laughs> I was sitting there alone in my office. It had been a long night. My tie was hanging loose. The sun was already beginning to set. I put my feet up on the desk, pushing some of the empty cigarette packs and bottles out of the way. It was one of those weeks, one of those weeks when you remember how lonely a man can get. (laughs) It was hard being all alone. (laughs) Oh, oh, that's great. (laughs) By myself. (laughs) Oh, Jack, Jack, you gotta read this book. (laughs) I sometimes wondered if I'd ever find love again. I was in a haze. I sat up from my desk, leaned forward. What's that there you got? It's a romance novel, but it's really funny so far because it talks about purple diamonds. (laughs) Funny? Let me have a look. I took the book. (laughs) I uh, flipped through the pages. (laughs) I mean, look. Yeah, ouch. Give me a paper cut. Look at all the words. They don't even make sense. They're just a bunch of gibberish and gobbledygook. (laughs) I looked down. She was right. They weren't even real words. They were just random letters strewn about. Slooper Moppy. (laughs) Slooper Moppy. That's when I thought about it. This book looked like it had been written in. I flipped the page. There it was. A crisp, feminine handwriting. <laughs> Looking at the page, I could almost hear the voice of the person who wrote it as oh, I read. Ma- Slooper Moppy. <laughs> Kaflonkle. Boggle Hum. Shuba D. Crip. <laughs> That's what I remembered. Wait a second. These random words sounded so familiar. I opened up my drawer. I pushed a couple of guns out of the way. (laughs) And I grabbed it. A code decoding handbook. Uh, Hi there, Jack. If I could just interject for a second. Whoa. The Uh, The door swung open. In walked Peter, my ah, landlord. I think I, this is the seventh time I have to remind you this month that you should not fire guns <laughs> in your home. Sorry, Peter. Let me get you a cup of coffee. Oh, thank you. I like it. Creamy. <laughs> <laughs> it's whipping it up for you. Gotta make sure 
make sure it's nice and frothy. <laughs> well, it just came out of the microwave. <laughs> What's a microwave? <laughs> I meant the thing, the incubator. I don't know. Oh, yeah, the incubator. The good old that. coffee incubator. We got that from our scientist friend last week. Oh. All right, he's the, he's the guy who invented the cellular telephone. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I have things to do. I'll just drink this. Uh, gulp, gulp, gulp. Um, 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 um. Binkle snow. Flawball. Who the bop? As I read, Robaduba Mitsu. It started to make sense, like the words were changing into proper English. <laughs> Slowly, though. Orange. <laughs> Cat. <laughs> Snipple. Roller coaster. <laughs> if I may interrupt. Somebody else walked in. The door was open. <laughs> I saw that you were reading my sister's book. <gasps> I looked up. Kitty had, was flush in the face. My name is Regina. <laughs> Regina Drew. <laughs> Nancy Drew's sister. She wrote that book and inserted those odd coded pages. I've had everyone I've known look at those, uh, those pages and decode them, but even decoded they don't make any sense to them. <laughs> It's uh, ironic that you should show up here right as I happen to be decoding. You haven't been watching us, have you? I looked over at Kitty. <laughs> I'm the one who gave Kitty that book in the first place. I'm gonna go sweep up. I got a Brunson's broom yesterday and I can't wait to use it. Kitty hurried off, leaving me and Regina Drew alone. She walked over and took a seat at my desk. I was hoping you'd be able to help me, Jack. What's this all about, Regina? Why didn't you just approach me normally? Why did you have to go through my secretary? You know I can't resist a good, uh, old-fashioned decoding <laughs> romance novel scandal. That's exactly why. I had to make sure you weren't doing this for your own interests. I wanted to make sure you had pure of heart in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> Snickleflack, Harambe pudding snack. <laughs> I continued to read. I noticed. <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Nancy Drew has been missing for seven years, does it? In fact, it does. <laughs> and I know that the cover says that there are purple diamonds, which would normally be a laugh, but... <laughs> purple diamonds are hilarious. <laughs> because they don't exist, or at least so I thought, till seven years ago. <laughs> Nancy... Bless you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nancy sent me a letter... She sounded excited. Mentioned the purple diamonds. Do you happen to real. have that letter with you? I've never taken it out of my wallet since she gave it to me. I took the letter and I began to read. Purple diamond! Purple diamond! Purple diamond! Purple diamond! Purple diamond! <laughs> it repeated over and over again. Signed I think maybe they're Nancy. actually real. Why would she just write the word Purple Diamond over and over again 24 times? I don't know. I imagine she must have been very excited. Yes, she was. <laughs> Somebody walked in. Oh. It was him. Mayor Stockton. <laughs> oh, I just couldn't help overhearing. Uh, you are deciding to look into Nancy Drew. It's funny. People seem to keep stumbling in here thinking that's the case. Well, but I haven't signed any paperwork yet, Miss, Mr. Mayor Stockton. Regina and I are dear, dear friends, and I just happen to be following her. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust that man, Jack. I can see why. I think he just admitted to stalking you. <laughs> Anywho, any evidence that you two might have about Nancy... It is, of course, public record that should go to the mayor. You wouldn't just be interested in finding that purple diamond, would you, Stockton? I know you're a collector of rare diamonds. A uh, purple diamond? <laughs> so <laughs> hilarious, <funny>. right? <laughs> oh, goodness. That looks like an interesting book uh, you have there. Anywho, Regina and I, we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I'll just be going with her. Uh, I think Regina's gonna have to stay here. We have dinner plans. Maybe we could catch you tomorrow. Oh, 
going into my territory, Jackson. <laughs> I'll have to see you at the polls. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me a narrow eye look, fixed his mustache and his hat. <laughs> Well, I'll just take a picture of your office real quick. <laughs> Anywho, no worries. I'll be right back someday. <laughs> and then he made his way out. I don't like the mayor. Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> he always brings that camera around and takes pictures of everywhere he goes. Oh, I'll finish sleeping. Oh my goodness, Bronson's brooms are so good. Fronts and brooms are the best. They're pretty good. I knew you were a woman of taste, Regina. So you and Jack and I are going to dinner tonight, eh? Uh, I mean, <laughs> if, if, if it's okay, I, I suppose. I thought about it for a second. Then I looked back at Regina. Do you happen to know the last place Nancy was seen before she disappeared? Last time I saw her seven years ago, she went to the carnival. <laughs> Are you sure it was the carnival? <laughs> the carnival on the pier. <laughs> on the pier, huh? Yeah. Lots of boats and things there. <laughs> Boat horns. <laughs> All kinds of sounds. <laughs> That's the last time I saw her. She said she needed to take a walk and get a fresh, a breath of fresh air. A fresh of breath a air. Fresh of breath air. I'm just getting my hat and coat on. Carnival Stockton bad. <laughs> Jack, stop reading that book. Let's go. Wait a second. Hey, wait a second. Right here. Carnival Stockton Bad. You see this? Carnival Stockton Bad. <laughs> Carnival Stockton Bad. I'm reading it over and over again. I I'm like started to sink in. Chinese food tonight. Or maybe Italian. We go to that nice restaurant around the corner. It has some fun. Carnival Stockton Bad. Carnival Stockton Bad. Pasta, Given the recent circumstances, that ravioli. sounds a little less cryptic <laughs> than the other things that are in there. And stuffed mushrooms. Toothpaste. And shells. <laughs> and we, went, we went right back to Salad. cryptic. <laughs> All right. Kitty. And tiramisu. Yes? It looks like me and you are heading down to the carnival. Oh, carnival. Okay. If I remember correctly, that old carnival shut down last year. So there won't be any carnival music or anything like that. I can have popcorn for dinner, I guess. <laughs> <sighs> we arrived at the carnival some time later. Regina made her way back home. I told her to lie low. Keep away from Stockton. It's too bad Regina couldn't join us, Jack. <laughs> yep, uh, hey, it's too bad. There you was, look like a detective. There was a grizzled old man. That's he was sitting over at a counter. Well, hey, stay away from this place, okay? This is my turf. I'm John Hardy of the Hardy Boys. <laughs> well, this is a public place and we can go wherever we want to, right, Jack? He flicked his cigarette and gave us a mean look. <laughs> this is the place. That fateful day where my ex-future wife, Regina, disappeared. <laughs> Not Regina, I'm sorry, Nancy. I'm old. I'm an old hardy boy. So, you're Nancy's husband, huh? And well, now you just hang around the ruins of the carnival that she disappeared in? I'm going to solve this case if it kills me. It's the last thing I can do for Nancy. And you've been here for seven years, you say? Yeah, I've survived on rats and cotton. You could have left. You didn't have to be here the whole time. No, my principal... My print, my sense of morality and stuff. you damn hardy boys. Oh, he's just like a loyal dog waiting for his owner to come home. That's so sweet. Freezing in the uh, snow. Is there someone out there? Uh, What's oh, that? Uh, oh, could somebody help me? Oh, he's got me trapped out here. Don't listen to that. <laughs> That's a ghost. My brother, my brother's got me trapped out here. Oh. Sounds like somebody's trapped down there. Why don't you talk, Hardy? What's that about? I slowly reached for my gun. F okay, fine. Look, me and the boys, Richard and Johnson. Right, Richard all, Johnson, the other two Hardy boys. Yeah, we always work best as a team, but but they wanted to leave. They wanted to leave Nancy behind. So you I, locked him in the basement of this whack-a-mole. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. They're chilling with the moles now, <laughs> <laughs> These moles, they're starting to eat my shoes. <laughs> it's really <laughs> small. <laughs> well, then tell me what you know, Hardy. I know just about as much as any other boy. 
Nancy went missing here seven years ago, and you've been here for seven years. You haven't found a single thing. What's been keeping you here? I grabbed him by the scruff of his shirt. <laughs> People don't lock their brothers in the basement of whack a moles for no reason. Tell me everything you know, right now. But the disappearance of Nancy was an inside job. Mayor Stockton was behind it. He wanted to hoard all of Nancy's writing talent for himself and make a memoir about his mayoral life so he could get reelected. <laughs> Nancy Carnival Bad. Does the word toothpaste mean anything to you? Well, yeah, I use it to clean my teeth. <laughs> I'm not a complete animal. I opened up the book and showed it to him. Toothpaste! Um, right there. Stockton, carnival bad. Hmm. Hmm. Nancy was trying to give a message to her readers. Hmm. She knew something was going to happen. Wait a minute. And look when this book was published. Wait. The toothpaste stall at the carnival. <laughs> we, sh we should check that out. How have you not explored every single corner of this place if you've been here for seven years? I just never... I always thought a toothpaste stall was always inherently benign. <laughs> I never investigated it. You have looked at everything but the toothpaste doll, yeah. huh? Toothpaste. I can use the toothpaste right now. So what? Can we? Yeah, we have a, we have those people Yeah, out why don't you let your brothers out? Yeah, I've been found out. Okay, Richard and Johnson. He opened up the hatch. His two ragged-looking old brothers climbed out. Oh, man, that's the last investigation we're ever going to do together. I quit. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> that's fine. Let's go enjoy some... Lunch. <laughs> and they left. <laughs> my, name, my name was John. <laughs> John Hardy started to leave. I guess he left us to the toothpaste all ourselves. <laughs> I just want to enjoy lunch with my brothers. It's been so long. I'll tell you if we find anything. Okay. You should probably leave here. Yeah. It's been, might, a, it's been long enough. I think I might be facing criminal charges also. So. <laughs> we started to head over to the toothpaste stall. A large tube, a half-empty toothpaste <laughs> rolled up on top. A rack with a bunch of empty spots where you would throw a ball to knock over tubes of toothpaste. It looked like some kind of ad, maybe a way to drum up business for the... Fledging Duck City toothpaste industry. Oh, you finally caught up, you bloody American. <laughs> <laughs> I got over to the toothpaste stall. There was a man there. He had a curled mustache and a monocle. Well, my name's Holmes. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Put it there. <laughs> Watson, get a look at this guy. Why? <laughs> if it wasn't Sherlock fucking Holmes and James Watson. He's a right big fucker, ain't he? <laughs> yeah, this stand is kind of creeping me out. It makes no sense. I looked at him. Something wasn't right about these two. Lollipops and popcorn, no toothpaste. You know, I always heard that Americans, they can never figure any shit out. Well, they're here, but we were here first, <laughs> right? I can't even understand what they're saying, Jack. I, I That's because they're speaking know. British. I, I'm, I'm going to go and look, look at the ocean. Hey, guys, it's me, Encyclopedia Brown. D did you know that a tomato is oh, yeah, actually right, a berry? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Encyclopedia. Oh, fuck off, Encyclopedia fuck, fuck off. Brown. Right, yeah, nobody, nobody's nobody. named that. All right, nobody's I, named that. I just wanted to you. share with you guys. Bye. There's an awful lot of people here for a carnival that closed down last year. <laughs> it's a mystery, ain't it? I stopped and thought for a second. <laughs> then I realized something. Nancy Drew. <laughs> the Hardy Boys. Sherlock Holmes and Watson. And Encyclopedia Brown. <laughs> Doc City's greatest detective. <laughs> All assembled in one place. You look like you're thinking. Well, Holmes... Usually you don't come this far north in Duck City. You're a more of a southern city kind of guy. I'm shocked to see you here. Well, every now and then you gotta migrate. I'm alright. And at the toothpaste stall, this very one where that hasn't been explored yet, huh? Then yeah. I looked. There was a door behind the stall. It was locked. Big padlock on it. Hadn't been touched. 
Can't believe I didn't even think to touch that yet. <laughs> Wops, did you touch that? I oh, fuck off, did I touch that? <laughs> did you guys know that padlocks were invented in 1793? <laughs> go! Okay, go. bye! Go! Go! Kitty. I pulled Kitty close. Oh! Distract these two Brits. I'm gonna go grab that padlock oh, and open it. I, I, okay, I, I was enjoying the ocean view, but all right. She hurried over. You heard of our new queen? Um, I, I, I guess she's really nice. I pulled out a set of thieves' tools and started to jimmy the lock. Yeah, she, she, uh, she, she it popped. Like she'd be good. And the door swung open. Here. I was shocked at what I saw inside. Run, run! <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> and out he walked. <laughs> uh, yeah, Scoo- Scooby. Oh, there's a lot more people in this carnival. Recreation. <laughs> Making room for one more. Agatha Christie needs a seat at the table. <laughs> oh, we don't mind. Is that Grand Jane? Is that Grand Jane talking? Oh. Is that fucking dog talking? Man, she's pretty hot. I'm 65 years old. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. All of the best detectives in Rock City. We are all on this case, and why is that? We all want the big money reward for the purple diamond. And that's when they all stopped. Don't forget us, the Harlem Boom Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> the entire Harlem Boom Tribe. I'm sorry I invited lots of people to this That's party. when they all stopped, and they pulled out of their coats and various pockets a single copy of the romantic novel. <laughs> the love of... Oh, that was hard as Purple Diamond. <laughs> Everyone here must have decoded the message and been led to the carnival, stocked in bed, and toothpaste. Stocked in carnival bed! <laughs> only the greatest yeah, minds... stocked in carnival bed. It's not fucking odd. All the greatest... Only the greatest minds could have solved that... That... <laughs> clue. <laughs> I looked at them, all of the smartest detectives in Doc City. I'm sure a few more would have showed up soon. <laughs> we obviously had been assembled in one place for a reason. <laughs> Did you guys know that stalactites come out from the bottom? Oh, oh, no, no, I just like, this guy's annoying. <laughs> I just thought I'd share my knowledge. Scooby, sick him. <laughs> oh, God, my boy. Settle down, everyone. As the captain of the whole Harlem Globetrotters, I think we're all, we all know we're here for the same reason. We all solved Nancy Truth's book, her weird clue from the book that's a bestseller, even though two pages are just a bunch of nonsense. Jack, Jack, come here, please. Jack. I, a kitty pulled me off to the side. The, the growing crowd inside of the I, toothpaste stall I, was getting getting yeah, tense. Jack, Jack, I, I got a really, really bad feeling about this. Why would all of the best detectives all be in one place and for, for some clue that was probably pretty easy for everybody to find out? I, I, I think this is a setup, Jack. I don't know. Yes, why would I... Why would there be a bunch of detectives all in the same little... Run down carnival. <laughs> well, hey, well, who the fuck are you, then? <laughs> Why, your famous mayor. Back again. Stockton. <laughs> oh, and I what brought you? a little a guest. Oh, you might have seen her before. Why, it's Regina. <clears throat> it was her. Hello, Jack. Regina Drew. And standing right next to her, <laughs> the award-winning detective in Dark City, Emerald. Jack, I saw them. I was walking down the street. Weren't you supposed to be on this case? They looked at each other, Emerald and Nancy, and they began to talk to each other. I was looking for my sister, uh, Nancy. I was just so bereft with grief that I had to find another detective to get on this case, and I knew that there were already so many here in this toothpaste stall. And so she called me. <laughs> Emerald Keaton, best detective in the city, and he's seen on my belt buckle. <laughs> he wore his normal giant golden belt buckle. 
Best Detective in Doc City Award. Raggy? Oh, a Robbie Rag. There's too many people in here, Jack. I'm gonna wait outside. <laughs> and then he left. I'll be outside just out of your shot and talking range. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already figured out what happened, so I'm just getting out of here. Watson. And that's when Stockton stopped him. Well, hold on a sec. I let the the lame detective out, but I'm keeping you all in here because you see, the purple diamond isn't just a laughable matter. Oh no! Oh, well, it's very really funny to me. <laughs> purple diamonds are hilarious. <laughs> no, it's actually a hypnotic device that I had a dear friend of mine invent. Jack, you might have heard of him. His name's Rube. And that's when I saw it. He opened up his coat. <laughs> there was only one way to get away with a crime big enough in Doc City. With all of the world's best detectives all in one city, there was no way to get away with a crime that wouldn't get solved immediately. But the mayor, the mayor was a smart, careful man. And as he pulled out this large, strange-looking ray gun sort of thing, he took out something else from his pocket. The one object that everyone here was looking for. Ah, uh, yes, you all recognize this, of course. It's Nancy Drew's magnifying glass. <laughs> I took it from her dead body. <laughs> She's <What>? dead. <laughs> oh, you mean the, the one was dead? Well. Oh, it can't be true. It's, it's uh, you know, purple, kind of. And then I looked at it. The mayor, he must have done it. He killed Nancy Drew seven years ago. And now he's trying to cover up his tracks now that everyone has solved them the code that Nancy left inside of the book. See and yeah. that magnifying glass? Something was strange about it. Purple glass. That can only mean one thing. I'm starting to feel sleepy, Jack. You ain't gonna hypnotize me, you fucking cunt. I go to my mind palace. <laughs> hey, <Jamai. laughs> Ah, uh, well, I'll set it to the British setting when everybody else is asleep. Oh, no! <laughs> Fuck off, mate. Fuck I started off. to get dizzy. <laughs> I, I had off. to fight it. That's when I realized. That magnifying glass. It was the purple diamond. Nancy was trying to warn us. I couldn't keep it together. Everything was growing dark. Ah, uh, these books will add to my library. <laughs> we all froze. The mayor started to walk around collecting the copies of Nancy Drew's book. Ooh, this is a good copy. Ah, mint condition. I should have known. Regina Drew. She must have given us the last copies. No wonder I couldn't find it. No wonder Kitty never read it. She's a she's an astute Nancy Drew fan. These must have been the last copies. The mayor had found them all. He knew about the code. And now he was going to tie up the loose ends and kill the only detective smart enough to solve this mystery. Uh, yes, that seems to be the last one. Wow, this one had coffee all over it. Jeez. We were all frozen in place. None of us could move. This is for my wife, you damn dirty ape. Wait, what? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll never get elected. Oh, oh, oh. They fought. I tried to struggle against the hypnosis. My body was paralyzed. Oh, standing. my God. Take oh. this, German suplex. <laughs> <laughs> With a gun. <laughs> wow. Everything all right in here, Jack? I heard gunshots. <laughs> the door swung open. Emerald stepped in. The man, the man was struggling with... With the mayor, I didn't recognize him, but he was doing the fabled German gun suplex. <laughs> <sighs> oh, they were struggling on the ground. All of the detectives frozen in a circle around them. I've been waiting seven years. I you Dude. that fucking Hardy boy. Yeah, John Hardy of the Hardy Boys. They, he had him in a chokehold. Oh God, he smells so bad. No, Dragon Twister. Ah! With the, with the gun! Ah! Oh my god! I'm bleeding out. I've been honing my body in my mind. Alright, John, I think that's enough. Ah. Emerald walked up, dusting, the, dusting his hands like he had done something really impressive. Thankfully, my astigmatism makes me immune to hypnotism rage. <laughs> 
Thanks, Emerald. Can't Deer. see him. Can't affect me. <laughs> Thanks, Emerald. You're a real hero. Anytime. I'm the world's best detective. Ever. <laughs> All of the detectives were cringing visibly. He grabbed the mayor. Totally, man. <laughs> And he threw him on the ground. Ugh. Time to undo this hypnosis. Emerald clapped his hands four times and did a little dance. And <laughs> 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 the triple toe. <laughs> <laughs> we all snapped at it. <laughs> Emerald. <laughs> 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 I don't like having to do your job for you, Jack. <laughs> it was six weeks later. <laughs> yep. It was six weeks later. I was sitting in my office, having a drink. I couldn't forget everything that happened. I reflected on it often. I looked at my guest. We were having a laugh. It was me and Encyclopedia Brown. <laughs> Did you know that technically humans are the only living organisms that laugh? <laughs> That's so neat, right? <laughs> it was a hell of a case. Stockton Carnival bad. I couldn't stop reading that book. Stockton Carnival bad. I flipped the page, and that's when I saw it. There was one more line. One last message from Nancy Drew to the world. <laughs> one that she knew only the smartest detectives could possibly decode. Broom good. <laughs> <laughs> Benson's broom. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeremy Brent, and I just want to thank you for listening to Jack Jack's Noir. This episode is brought to you by CSC Sacramento Theater. We record live there every first Saturday. You can find ticket info at cscsacramento.com. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, uh, leave us a review on iTunes helps us spread the show around and also we'll release a bonus episode for every 50 reviews we get those episodes will be based on suggestions that you leave in your reviews so it's a way for you folks to get involved lastly if you want to send a message to jack to read in a future segment you can send those over to jack jackson noir at gmail.com thank you so much for listening we will see you next wednesday